So today, Keemstar just released on Drama Alert, the Leafy is here 2018 interview, which the interview in itself isn't super interesting. They just talk about why he left YouTube, etc, etc, and all the answers are pretty generic. He just got burnt out on YouTube, obviously no one really liked him at the time, but I'm making this video more to focus on like the audience reaction to the whole Keemstar vs. Leafy is here, and I guess Grade A as well, saga from 2016 all the way up until now. The viewer base went from hating Keemstar with a burning passion and being 100% behind Leafy, then once the Contact Cop released on Leafy, going to hating the shit out of Leafy and not hating on Keemstar as much anymore, then over the course of like six months, slowly like diminishing all the hate for Keemstar and then just only hating Leafy, and then ever since Leafy left, his hate has slowly diminished until now we're looking back on this fondly and we're like, you know, bad stuff happened, but Keemstar's pretty cool guy. Leafy, he made some shitty videos, but pretty cool guy. And I think this is the perfect way that the audience should see it at a more objective point of view. There's no bad guy, there's no good guy, just people who've made mistakes and you gotta judge people based off their actions. And this is all well and good, but I'm making this video to make the biggest I told you so of my life because back when Leafy first released his Keemstar rant, about a couple days later, I uploaded a video response to it in detail explaining why he was wrong. Like, I explained everything that you guys just kind of took two years to slowly figure out, or I guess one year for the uh, most of the initial information to figure out. And the amount of dislikes and hate I got in that video, despite me re-watching it and actually agreeing with a lot of the points and a lot of the points making sense, is just insane. And it just shows, like, how pig-headed the audience was, and I hope this is something that just doesn't repeat in the future, because the leafy slash Keemstar hate trains are the most zombie following viewer experience I've ever witnessed. People were so set in their ways on one opinion and everyone was just hearing the same opinion be echoed to them. Like for example, one YouTuber would make a video, like for example, Leafy on Keemstar, and then Grade would make one, and then their fan bases are talking about it and agreeing with each other, and it's just like one straight opinion until Baited came out, and then there was kind of like an opposing side and a platform for Keemstar to talk about some of the stuff, and another side start to form, but it was just so one-sided in the opinions, and I find it so strange like it was so one-sided towards keem hate and then once the leafy content cop came out it was just one-sided towards leafy hate and i know like people talk about the content cop and saying it's like career ruining and honestly i think the videos in themselves are entertaining and they do criticize the content but if you just look at the video alone it shouldn't be career ending the only reason is even considered career ending is because of the fan reaction to it and how it affected Leafy's channel and even Keemstar when the content cop for Keemstar dropped. iDubbbz shares a very similar audience that Leafy does and Keemstar did back in the day. I currently believe that Keemstar has a bit of a different audience than he did back in the day. But it was kind of like the edgy, like, Filthy Frank, Max Mofo, iDubbbz, Leafy is here, Keemstar type people, you know? Those type of people who like to watch that type of content. And since they shared a fan base, they just saw iDub's video and just completely turned on Keemstar, but that was all of Keemstar's fan base. So then Keemstar didn't really have much of a fan base left, except for people who are level headed and actually looked at the story objectively. And this is what I'm here to talk about today the complete denial of logic, or the denial of accepting another point of view from viewers. And I hope. To God, this doesn't like repeat in the future. It probably will because the new people come into YouTube and eventually like only 10% or 1% of original 2016 viewers who witnessed the Leafy slash Keemstar uh, era will remain and then other people will forget and the same cycle will continue if the circumstances align with creators battling each other again. But like nobody was thinking for themselves everybody was just following the content creator it was just so blatant i know people idolize content creators and they like 
care a lot about the YouTubers they watch because it's kind of like on a personal level and it, YouTube has created this weird like idolism thing. Kind, they're kind of like a celebrity but even more so in the like personable department and people just blindly believe these this one guy this like one youtuber that they really like anything they say they believe and it's just such a dangerous situation like i honestly don't think most of you guys realize like how pig-headed and how swingy this whole situation was i'm gonna use my video again as an example just to show you guys how pig-headed these people were so i'm gonna show some clips from my video if you want to see the full 32 minute video, it's pretty long, but it's like a full in-depth reply to Leafy's first Keemstar rant. The link will be in the description. This is the dislike to like bar, and uh, these are some of the comments. So this first comment here is just talking about the situation where Pyro got his face revealed on Keemstar's Twitter. After it had already been posted elsewhere online, Keemstar took the photo of Pyro and made a joke about how he looked on his Twitter. And it became a major point of contention against Keemstar for whatever reason. Here's my opinion in the video. Okay, let's look at this real quick. He tweeted out Pyro Cynical's face on June the 4th. Let me quickly go into Google, type in Pyrocynical face, and see when this image was uploaded of Pyro's face. Oh look! Two months ago! Was June the 4th two months ago? Hmm! 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 Yeah, you got busted. Pyro showed his face online in some sh way, shape, or form. I don't know if it was in a video, I don't personally watch the guy's videos. But he showed his face two months ago. Everybody knows this. Even fans of Pyro who don't dislike Keemstar have said that this is a stupid point. And yet you're bringing it up again, Leafy, because you want to make Keemstar look bad. Even if you don't have solid facts to support it. And here's what the comment actually said. The whole argument about Pyro's face reveal isn't as cut and dry as you make it out to be in the video. While smaller sources had leaked this photo before, it wasn't as nearly widespread as this became. Some of his own fans, many of whom wanted to respect his wishes to remain anonymous online, didn't even know what he looked like. By introducing it on the level that Keem did, he went to the next level, and it was an invasion of privacy. Heavily disagree. Pyro has even been advised that should he choose, he would have grounds to bring a suit against Keem over it. Yes, people back in the day talked so much about lawsuits over the stupidest things a picture of someone's face and the fact that pyro uses his face in almost all his videos now is just so hilarious people just blew shit out of proportion so much for like little issues i never thought like showing someone's face on the internet was a huge deal especially if it was already public in some form just making it more widespread doesn't really i mean it's their fault to begin with they posted it publicly in the first place i don't really yikes this argument and also if i am wrong feel free to correct me but i don't think any larger youtubers or sources close to pyro has ever made a statement about it if that is the case then one could assume that people were never really positive about whether the image was really him or not again that argument does hinge on whether anyone truly ever confirmed the original leaked photos were indeed pyro and if someone in the know did so then i would stand corrected on that particular statement Finally, Pyro has stated that Keemstar took photos from his private, personal Facebook account, which was a lie by the way. They, people at this time were at each other's throats and found any excuse to like hate on someone. There was another um, Pyro cynical Keemstar hate video before the Leafy one came out. Um, that kind of like built up to the Keemstar hate, which is why Leafy put out his video because he just wanted to like capitalize on the hate Keemstar was already receiving. He said so in the interview that just came out. But yeah, people just made like huge big deals over like stupid things and added little lies to make it seem like more impactful. Like, oh, private personal Facebook account. Keemstar took his photos from like a very secure place. And it's like, no, he just looked it up on Google and he found the images. Anyways, 
At least some of the images had never been leaked, and Keemstar took those from a source most people would have never had access to, or the ability to tie the account to Pyro at least. He even shut the account down once this started to avoid further images being leaked in the future. Super dramatic, Pyro. So, it was a little more complicated than just saying he searched Google images for pics of Pyro's face. You seem to be trying to make solid arguments, so I assume that you don't know the full story and that you weren't just manipulating the story to further your case. Yes, the classic word, manipulation back in the day. Everybody was manipulating everybody. Manipulation, manipulation, manipulate, manipulate, manipulate. In reality, all of... YouTube was pretty much being manipulated at this point by Leafy is here and uh, he used that word to silence Keemstar Defenders which was kind of genius in a way because now anytime someone logical and smart about the situation or Keemstar Defender about the situation will bring up manipulation since that's actually what Leafy and Greg were doing to their audience they were just being like oh you're just copying what we're saying about you fucking retard so it was actually kind of smart in that way but holy shit people were just so blinded and manipulated back in the day it's crazy uh that said I think you should rethink your position on this particular statement. If Pyro has been advised that he has the grounds for a lawsuit, then he should choose to take that route. Then I think it's a little more complicated than just saying his image was previously leaked, so Keemstar didn't invade his privacy. Of course, as an internet personality, there's always the risk that something like this could happen at some point. That does not make it right, and it does not absolve the person responsible for the leak. So, like... I'm not going to say this person's stupid because they wrote this out and made some pretty solid arguments based off kind of like the mindset that was being pushed by Leafy and Great at the time. But I'm just showing this comment not to say that he's stupid, but just to show like how deep people believed Leafy. Like people believed the Leafy video, the Keemstar video, word for word. They didn't question anything and they like went in depth to try and... Um, advocate the points made in the leafy uh, Keemstar rant which is just it's just like amazing the level that people were manipulated and that's why I'm saying like I hope to god nothing like this happens again why are you defending Keemstar I also have experienced Keemstar's insults offenses and unacceptable behavior watch Pyro's video too I've watched all major Keemstar videos I dubs leafy Pyro I'm not defending Keemstar as a whole just the stuff that Leafy mentions in this video because IMO, his video, had very weak arguments. Now, this is a bit of a lie. I was only defending Keemstar on the points made in the Leafy video. I thought I was pretty fair in the video. Like, I was a Keemstar fanboy at the time. I'm not as much anymore, but I still like, like Keemstar as much as the next guy. But I was a really big fanboy of Keemstar at the time. But I tried to be, like, super objective and only defend Keemstar on those points made in the Leafy video. And the iDubs video, my opinion on the Keemstar iDubs video when I watched it and I was a big Keemstar fanboy is I agreed with everything iDubs said, but what iDubs said in the Keemstar content cop is why I liked Keemstar. I liked Keemstar for those reasons that iDubs didn't like Keemstar. And when people watched that video, they thought everything iDubs said that Keemstar did was objectively wrong. And... I thought it was entertaining as fuck, honestly. Like, I really like that side of Keemstar and just witnessing it and entertaining uh, it. Obviously, if he treats people like that in real life, it's a bit, like, nutty and psycho. But I always kind of was under the assumption that, like, Keemstar puts on a bit of a face for YouTube, you know? Everyone... I, I feel like it's kind of more well-known knowledge now than it was back then that everybody on YouTube kind of puts on a bit of a face. And I've been a YouTuber since 2011. Not a good YouTuber since 2011. I don't even know if I'd consider myself a good YouTuber now, but uh, I kind of knew that, I guess. And that kind of gave me a unique perspective on it. Although I thought it was kind of common knowledge at that time, but maybe it wasn't as much that YouTubers kind of put on a bit of an exaggerated um, persona of themselves. But yeah, let's see the next comment. He skipped the part about Keemstar saying racist slash white supremacist things. You know, in that 60 mi six minutes of intro, how can you feel okay with Keemstar's threats, legitimate or not, as a form of limiting people's free speech? That's terrible. Come on, Ball Blacks. This is not what your channel's about. This is from an old fan because I was making gaming videos um, and then I kind of just randomly came out with this video, which is why I eventually 
transitioned over to the second channel where I'm now talking about drama and still doing gaming stuff on my main channel. Subscribe! Um, but anyways, I skipped the first six minutes of the Keemstar rant by Leafy because it was mostly about Keemstar's past and I was just defending the points he made about present day Keem because that's what I had a problem with. As for this content not belonging on my channel, you're right, that's probably the only drama video I will make for this channel. I've just been really wanting to talk about this for a while and Leafy's video was the last straw. I have a couple of gameplay videos in the works right now for my channel and we started uploading Mario Party DS on Trash Trio. I love that fucking series guys. I love it. A little bit of a shout out here but my collaborative gameplay channel with uh, YouTubers Chaos Bender and Bob 18 which are relevant now but at the time they were a bit more relevant. Um, it doesn't matter I'm friends with them regardless but we made a great Mario Party series. It was pretty fun. Not gonna lie. This, I love 2016 with YouTube. Honestly, I, we were spoiled as fuck, dude. So much juicy drama, so much exciting stuff to talk about. No Jake Paul, Logan Paul fucking bullshit, dude. Literally having to make like a seven hour documentary series just to understand Jake Paul and like put the final nail in the coffin for a Jake Paul drama. Hopefully, hopefully no one talks about Jake Paul after the Shane Dawson series. That was such a good ending point for that drama even if he was the first one to tell the public he messed up does not mean he didn't bring hell onto an innocent man i hated this argument dude if you looked in the video here's my opinion in the video i'm just gonna roll it right now another thing keemstar is infamously known for on top of threatening people is falsely accusing people of being pedophiles back in january keemstar made a drum alert where he falsely accused the wrong guy of being a pedophile and the guy ended up crying because of the amount of hate that keemstar sent at him um, excuse me, Leafy, Keemstar has said on multiple occasions five months ago, he even came out himself as the first person to say he got the story wrong. Now, the problem with this is that that's not John. That's a gentleman named Tony. And when we reported this video, a bunch of you went over and harassed this guy, called him names, pedo, sex offender, you name it. This guy didn't fucking do anything. He didn't do anything wrong. And because of me, he was harassed for about two hours. You yourself, five months ago, made a video defending him on this very subject and saying exactly why this, this wasn't a huge issue and why Keemstar more than made up for making this man cry. And I'll say it right now, drum alert fucked up, okay? No one here is gonna argue that they didn't. And honestly, dude, maybe they do deserve a little bit of hate. But look, dude, they're doing their best to try to correct this mistake. They know they made a mistake and they've done everything they possibly can to correct the mistake. They made the video saying that they were wrong about the information, they said sorry multiple times, and I even heard something about them paying for a trip for this guy, okay? They really have done everything they can to try to make this right for this guy. For good intentions or just trying to get the hate off their back, they really have done literally everything, okay? They took down the video, they apologized, made a new video saying that all the information was wrong, they apologized a few more times, and then I also heard apparently they're going to be paying for a free trip for this guy, okay? So, I don't really know the details, but they're literally going to be flying him out to a, a RuneScape convention or something. So, the fact that you're criticizing him about this now in this video basically proves that you're just grasping for reasons to expose Keemstar so you can get back at him for doing whatever to you. I honestly don't know what he did to you because you don't explain it too well in this video. All you do in this video is bash him for seemingly no reason or little to no reason. So yeah, you're basically contradicting what you said five months ago, which I actually agreed with. And yeah, you're basically bringing up this point just to uh, get more ammo at Keemstar with no actual logic. So congratulations, you're a dumbass. Dude, I was so sick of this argument. People were bringing up this argument so fucking much. What else could he have done in that situation? Like it's been five months, he did almost everything wrecked by the situation. And it's just like, holy shit, dude. Like what? can he do like i sympathize with the man you know fucking crazy dude this is so sad you can't just assume things are sarcasm and you don't know what's going through their head if you look exactly at what this tweet says it is very sarcastic and i'm 
Either Leafy really hates Keemstar, or Leafy is fucking retarded to not see that most of this tweet is sarcasm. Of course, he is sending a message to him saying, back off, basically, but everything else besides that core uh, statement is just layers of sarcasm. It's not sad to assume things that are going through people's heads. Some people have more of that intuition to, like, kind of gauge what people are thinking about based off their tone, other actions, etc, etc. And I've watched a lot of Keemstar streams, and I think that was one of the main reasons to why I favored Keemstar so heavily in the situation before a lot of people kind of got to know Keemstar through like baited podcasts and other things down the line, but I already kind of had that experience from his streams, so I kind of could tell that it was sarcasm from him. I don't know if it was ever confirmed or not. I think that might have actually been one of the things that was unconfirmed. It was definitely like my most weak kind of like could be, could not be type thing. But looking back at it now and knowing the relationship between Clown and Keem, kind of funny looking back on that now. This is my favorite comment. <laughs> if this dude is serious, I've lost all hope and humanity and sense of justice. People talk about justice so much during this Keemstar like hate train dude people are like oh Keemstar's so immoral dude where's the justice he's such a dickhead dude d don't you get like edgy locker room type humor like you're watching stuff like idubs filthy frank max mofo they literally call people cunts all the time and uh, shit like that yourself. like why what's with the sense of justice bullshit come on Fuck, man. Truly a narrow-minded fuckhead. It's also funny, because Keemstar calls his fans cancer slash bad. Uh, the Keemstar <clears throat> calling his fans cancer. Honestly, when people, like, like criticize fan bases, I know, like, uh, I don't- Baited Podcast didn't come out at this time, the time this comment was made, but I know Keemstar, specifically in the third episode of Baited Podcast, kept saying, like, don't be a fucking sheep. Everybody's a sheep, blah, 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 which I wholeheartedly agree with. Like, when you're criticizing a fan base, you're just trying to criticize, like, the loudest minority. Or just the loudest part, even if it's the majority, of the fan base you're addressing. You're not addressing all fans. You can't just assume all fans are just cancer and bad of a certain creator. You know, people like people for different reasons. And I personally don't think I was a cancer slash bad fan, but, you know, maybe I was just a cancer kid trying to make a defense video on a fucking evil psychopath who knows dude it's not like we found out that i was right all along my second time watching i'm really trying to understand what you were saying and to see your perspective but your arguments get worse the more i think about it and try to understand them and i just end up hating you even more dude this, see this is what i'm saying people watch the video multiple times people were so invested in this drama i felt like the um retention time for drama videos was like at an all-time high during 2016, like, people will watch through, like, hour- Well, I mean, people complained about, like, the 50-minute defense video by Keemstar, which, by the way, you could speed up two times and listen to everything pretty clearly, and it would be the same length as one of Ke Leafy's rants, or one of Pyro's rants, or one of, uh, Grade A Under A's rants, or one of IDUB's Contact Cops, but, you know, people don't want to, like, listen to- uh, the defense, they only care about listening to their own opinion being perpetuated throughout these Keemstar attack videos, which was kind of interesting, I found, when people were responding to the, uh, Keemstar defense video initially. It just boggles my mind that people were so into this drama that was happening, but all the opinions were basically the same. I'm curious which arguments do you think are flawed and why? There are five topics and arguments. I want to know so I can improve myself for future arguments I may have since this video is obviously not bringing the points across well enough. You are alright. You just picked the wrong side, so in my eyes all you say is wrong. But I see what you mean. Just make sure you pick the right side or you will be hated. This comment in particular, it just is so self-aware. It's like exactly what I think about the situation. People just thought there was a right side and a wrong side. Dude, 
whenever you look at an argument, this can be applied to politics as well. I see it happen in politics all the time. Oh, liberals are the good guys. Republicans are the bad guys. Republicans are the good guys. Liberals are the bad guys. Dude, just look at every issue, look at it objectively, and then pick a side based off that, or maybe just create a third side, you know? Like, have your own opinions, people. What is this? Picking sides? Fuck, dude. YouTube, yikes. Okay. I knew most people weren't on Keemstar's side, but I believe that Levy's video in particular, he was attacking Keem on issues that weren't a big deal. Doc's tweet, for example. Solved, Tony, for example. Or straight up lies, Pyro's face. Yes, people lie in YouTube videos all the time. Even people are claiming Jake Paul lied in his very emotional uh, talk with Shane in the final episode of the Shane Jake Paul documentary. And I'm glad people are finally starting to accuse people of lying even in those sensitive areas because in 2016 people just believed everything. Slurp up all lies. <laughs> Anyways. And since people weren't publicly defending Keem against this video, this was, yeah, this was actually a pretty interesting video for me to make because I truly felt like I made the video because there was nothing else like it on YouTube. Keemstar defense videos were so non-existent at the time. And it's part of why I make the type of videos I make on this channel in particular because, like, no one really makes, like, YouTube drama tweet compilations or, like, other type of recaps. It's something that doesn't exist, and I always want to make a video that isn't, like, repeating somebody else's uh video so this kind of like goes against that ideology because a lot of people are going to be talking about leafy and you know the retrospective and oh 2016 was so great but that was one of the reasons why i was inclined to make a video like this it's i'm always super encouraged whenever it's kind of like a brand new territory of video that i thought people might like to watch and witness I feel like the video explaining the other side of the argument was needed. I felt like that too. Yes, I understand. So at least people were willing to talk back to me even though they did not agree. This video is not up to snuff. Hey, pretty tame comment, all things considered. Question, are you hating on Leafy or both? Just a video explaining how retarded Leafy's video was and how much of a hypocrite he is. Yes, 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 dude. Finally, someone with a brain. God, I thought this video was so good. Looking back on it, it's actually really, really well made compared to some of my other videos made at the time. And you can see like from the annotations, I was pretty overwhelmed by the response of this video, to be honest, because this was right after the Keemstar, I watched the Keemstar rant and I didn't know that the internet had such a big hate boner. I'm kind of glad I made this video regardless of the internet hate boner for Keemstar because I can like look back at it and see like my opinion and see like uh, that I was pretty smart in this whole situation. Sorry if I'm stroking my own ego too much in this video, but like, I don't know, like I really watched a lot of Keemstar and a lot of Leafy. I watched both of those YouTubers and I really felt super strongly about the situation based off like how much I've watched Keemstar. At the time I was watching a lot of his streams that he did on stream.me, um, which obviously he doesn't do anymore, but um, I don't know. I felt like I knew this side of Keemstar that not a lot of people were familiar with because he just did drama alert. And I really wanted to post my opinion on this and I'm glad I did, but it was just so weird trying to like defend my points and stuff. But uh, looking back at this, I actually came out like pretty well articulated about it. That's kind of ironic that I'm saying it in this way. I can't even say, uh, I can't even properly articulate that I was articulate, but you know, that's about it. Just a little bit of a retrospective talking about this and just like how I felt about the situation overall and um, how it's evolved over time. Uh, I could probably go in depth about this forever. It was just, it's just a, such a nice time to think back on. There's a lot of cool drama going on. Uh, all my favorite, uh, drama creators came from that time period. And it's so interesting to look back at, like, all the stuff that was happening then and then look at the aftermath and see, like, where Nick Cash is right now, or where Leafy is right now, or where Pyro is right now, or where El Elvis is right now, where Tommy C from Beta Podcast is, where Colossal is Crazy is, just how everything just evolved. And honestly, I think we're in a great place with all those content creators now. Everyone's come to an understanding. It took a long time, and people were fucking 
just going at it back in the day but i don't know it's just a nice time to think back on and it was definitely exciting and i felt like there was actually some meat to the drama like everyone had their own side and there was some truths and good points on every single side and that's why i made it so fun to like go to war and like try and like argue for these people and because it felt like there could be legitimate arguments made for either side now it's just jake paul's like yeah i know jake paul did the stupid thing but and it's just like well he did that stupid thing that's about the end of it there isn't much more depth to it i don't know it's just not as fun anymore but yeah uh, I hope you enjoyed this little retrospective, this little ramble video. If you do enjoy this type of content, I would love feedback in the comments. I know this was a bit more self-absorbed than I usually uh, prefer to be. But yeah, I also have a video coming up soon about the Shane Dawson documentary. My whole opinion on that because I watched a shit ton of it. I did make a uh, shortened version of it, cutting it down from 7 hours to 3.5, which took way too long. I spent well over 24 hours, maybe closer to 48 hours working on that whole thing. So I have like, I have like moments of the documentary drilled into my head. I have it almost memorized. It's actually kind of crazy, the whole seven hour thing. But um, yeah, I'm going to post my video talking about that eventually. And I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you later.